finish making these glazed donuts. First time I've ever made a raised glazed donut. I don't think they're as pretty as those from Tim Hortons, but uh, they look pretty good to me. I'm going to give one a try. Let's see, I think I'll have a try with this one right here. Seems to have enough glaze on it. Mm. Nice and soft on the inside. And a little bit crisp, I guess, on the outside. It said it was supposed to be crispy and creamy. Mm. We all know what they're talking about, I guess. That famous donut shop, but I've never had a donut from that donut shop, so I can't compare them. They are very good, though. If I must say so myself. So I hope you will watch the rest of the video, and if you give these a try, let me know. Well, hello, everybody. Today I'm going to try to make raised donuts. I've never done this before. I say that a lot when I'm doing my videos. The recipe I will put a link to down below is from allrecipes.com, and they call it crispy and creamy donuts, which I presume is meant to say that they're like a donut you would get from the donut shop called Krispy Kreme. I won't be able to compare it because I've never even seen one of those donut shops. Um... Maybe if you make them yourself and you've eaten Krispy Kreme, you can tell me how close or how far away these are from it. Let's just go through the list of ingredients first. Uh, a half ounce of yeast, and I'm using the instant yeast. A quarter cup of water and a cup and a half of milk, both which should be lukewarm. The quarter cup of water was to prove the yeast in. I'm using yeast that isn't necessary so I just combined it with the milk just to make sure that I have the same amount of liquid ingredients. A half cup of white sugar, a teaspoon of salt, two eggs, third of a cup of vegetable shortening, five cups of all-purpose flour. And for the glaze, uh, which will be made later on after I get the donuts cooking I guess, it's two cups of confectioner's sugar, a teaspoon and a half of vanilla, and I'll be using the vanilla paste, and four tablespoons of hot water that I don't have there, of course, don't need it quite yet. I, once again, I did all of this in weight, uh, in grams. I, I convert it just to, well... Five cups of flour for one thing, and how tightly is the flour packed in the in the cup or whatever, just to know that I've, I've got the amount that they're thinking about, I guess. So we'll, without further delay, we'll get the stand mixer out and get started on this. I put the liquids, the milk and the water, in the microwave for about 20 seconds, just to bring it up to lukewarm temperature. that with the yeast, and the sugar, the eggs, the salt, and the shortening. finger and you it says to start with about two cups of the flour so I will do roughly two cups of the flour I guess I don't know might have been better to start with the paddle but I have this thing about dirtying stuff that doesn't need to be dirty I guess I I seem to dirty everything in the house when I'm cooking anyway so Seems to have come together fairly well, I guess. Now you add the flour gradually until you have a dough that comes away from the sides of the bowl. So 
And this thing is very noisy and difficult to talk over. But I think that's pretty much it. I blasted a bit of flour there. Now it says to let it knead for five minutes. It has finished kneading for five minutes. It goes into an oiled bowl, covered, and allowed to rise until double. And it says when you poke a finger into it and the indentation stays there, it's ready. So we'll come back probably in an hour or so. I think it did its rising all right. It's more than double in size that it used to be. Now it gets rolled out to roughly a half inch thick. Let's see, get it coated with some flour here. Just stick to the board if I can help it. thought it would, since it's sort of a yeast dough, I thought it would probably be springing back, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. I think I found something that's older than I am. <laughs> this donut cutter belonged to my mother, and I remember well her using it when I was a child. So. Way to, to rise, cover with a, a towel for a while until they have risen. While that's going on, I'll start heating the oil and uh, make the glaze. I just lost the thing out of the center of the donut cutter. Ten second rule will have to apply, I guess. I'm also going to save the holes. <laughs> holes are always my favorite part. And I'll bring you back when I have these all cut and on the tray. I got 28 donuts and a bunch of holes. And now they get covered and allowed to rise until they're double in size. Hopefully they don't all stick together on the tray. While the donuts are rising, good time to make the glaze, I guess. A teaspoon and a half of vanilla. As I said before, I'm going to use my vanilla paste. I like it much better. And I won't worry too much about whether it's a teaspoon and a half or not. Just put a, a gob in there. That's the melted butter. And add to that the confectioner's sugar. Let's stir it around a bit first. inside of the bowl when I finish. Okay, Up to four tablespoons of hot water. This water just came out of the microwave. I'll start by adding about a half of it, I guess. All of it. 
don't think that is quite soft enough yet. I think what I'll do is I'll put it in the microwave for a few seconds and see what it looks like then. I don't want to add too much water and end up being watery. If needs be, I'll add a little more, but right now I'll put it in the microwave for a few seconds. And after a few seconds in the microwave, it didn't change it all that much. But you're supposed to glaze the donuts with it when the donuts are still hot. So I will go with that rather than get it too loose. I think it needs to be loosened up. I can do that at the time. I've already been tasting it. <laughs> that vanilla makes it taste excellent. Mm. And I don't know if you can pick out the little specks or not, but you can see all the vanilla seeds in there. Well, the oil is up to 350 degrees, and I tested by frying one of the holes. I guess I'll try a few of the donuts. Maybe four at a time is enough. Cutting the fire back because the oil keeps getting hotter. So. Uh oh. I don't know how hot it is now because I just dropped the thermometer. done. I'm putting them on a plate here with a paper towel to absorb any of the extra oil before I move them over to the rack where they will be glazed. And the rack has got paper towels below it to absorb the glaze that no doubt will drip down. And the glaze is supposed to be put on while they're still hot. And they are still hot. They're burning my fingers. Well, I'll bring you back and show you the finished product. Well, I think they're probably prettier at Tim Hortons, but I suspect once they cool, they're going to taste pretty good. I fried the donut holes at the end, and I just put those in a bag with cinnamon and sugar and shook them. So they are cinnamon sugar donut holes. They look good, too. Well, thank you very much for watching. And as I said, a link to the... Uh, recipe will be down below. Whether or not these even resemble Krispy Kreme donuts, I don't know, but I'm going to give them a try. You will have seen that at the beginning of the video.